So I was re-watching Goshi Galica here by myself, and I thought, oh, of course, it's a musical. Um, now, by categorizing it in this way, I don't mean to denigrate it at all. Um, for those of us who love musicals, it represents one of the highest forms that cinema can attain. Uh, but maybe more specifically, I was thinking of Fred Astaire, uh, who, of course, famously said, either the camera dances or I do. Um, and I think by that measure, uh, he would be approving of tonight's program. Um, but what do I really mean? Obviously, it might be a little bit odd to categorize these as musicals. Um, so I mean dance for camera accompanied by music, but including the sounds that the bodies of the performers make, right? Uh, we also know that Fred Astaire always dubbed over Ginger Rogers' taps, which might say something about the relationship between men and women in the movie industry at that time, uh, but also speaks to the specificity of the sound uh, 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 that the feet also make. And I think that the sounds of the bodies moving in Gosha Gallagher are very beautiful and a part of that experience. Um, of course, Dance for Camera accompanied by music is literally true of the first film we'll see tonight, whose uh, title says it all. Merce Cunningham's first performance of Stillness in Three Movements to John Cage's composition 433 with Trevor Carlson, New York City, 28 April 2007 by Tacita Dean. So it's a musical even if the dance is still and the music is silence. Right? Um, but, you know, really comparing these films together, although they might have certain formal similarities, a static camera documenting a kind of performance, um, they're really two utterly distinct films. And I think that's because they're two utterly distinct modes of choreography. Um, in the first film, we'll see dance at its most elemental, the body in space in a single position, a real distillation, and of course performed by one of the great uh, figures of modern dance, Merce Cunningham. Whereas in the second film, we have untrained performers, <coughs> and actors, um, involved in collaborative play and the use of everyday movements, maybe recalling works by Trisha Brown and Yvonne Rayner, maybe even Simone Forti. It's not too far. Um, but we do this all the time in museums, when we're standing in front of one work of art and we talk about another one, compare it to other things, instead of just being with it. Um, and against interpretation, Susan Sontag says that there's no such thing as content in art. And what you see is what you see, essentially. And it's the sensual experience that actually has meaning. She writes about the film last year in Marion Bad. What matters in Marion Bad is the pure, untranslatable, sensuous immediacy of some of its images and its rigorous, if narrow, solutions for certain problems of cinematic form. I think that's true, and I think it also holds true for works today, in addition to the time that she was writing. And I think it's not the films, the films that we're going to see tonight, it's not their relationship to art history that makes them powerful. It's their utter clarity they have and how they relate to their subjects, and therefore how the films relate to us when we watch them. Towards the end of Against Interpretation, Sontag writes that transparency is the highest, most liberating value in art today, and I find myself very sympathetic to that idea. So the use of the long take here, um, as opposed to, let's say, narrative cinema, where it can also, often be a sort of bravura passage, you end up looking at the shot rather than what it shows. Here, I think it's a necessity. It's the clearest, most precise, most sympathetic way to show what had to be shown. And to end on a personal note, I'd just like to say when I first saw Gosha Galka over 10 years ago as a graduate student, it changed the way I thought about films and it changed the way I made films. So I just wanted to thank you for that publicly. Um, we're of course honored to have Sharon Lockhart with us this evening. I'll keep the bio brief. Um, Lockhart has had solo exhibitions at some of the most prestigious galleries and museums in the world and has won many of the major awards as well, including most recently the Herb Alpert Award. So please join me in welcoming Sharon Lockhart.
didn't really see the film. But um, when it started, my husband said, oh, it's like seeing an old friend again, which mm -hmm. was definitely true. Um, so this film I made just a few years out of graduate school. I graduated in 93 and was given a residency to go to live in Japan um, for three months. And um, it was the first time I had been given that kind of an opportunity. And I knew I wanted to make a film that was um, dealing with certain notions of one culture looking at another. Um, I worked with a choreographer, Stephen Galloway, from the Frankfurt Ballet. And um, basically, I spent three months, two and a half months with the girls researching their practices and going to their games and um, specifying certain um, exercises and rituals that they have, um, did on a daily basis and cut out the, the game and um, brought Stephen in and for 10 days we practiced with the girls in these um, 10 minute segments and then we shot the film in one day in six um, 10 minute shots. So everything was really quite choreographed. Um, there's a couple of sections that are um, unscripted, I guess you'd say. Uh, section three, the portrait section, um, we changed all of the um, direction at the last minute to try and um, get a glimpse of the girls' individual um, personalities. Uh, I was inspired a lot by postmodern dance at the time and this idea of the proscenium. Um, I can answer questions if you guys would like. <laughs> Or I can keep talking. <laughs> I mean, right now it's it's kind of funny because right now I'm working on a film in Poland with um, girls that are both the same age from um, a girls' home, a sociotherapy center for girls, and I didn't even really make the connection until very recently. Um, and. Yeah, so that was really interesting for me. And then also that the auditions are upstairs. Um, yeah, I mean, the girls from Goshigaka could be the parents of the <laughs> girls from Rachenko <laughs> in the project. So, um, yeah, but I was thinking a lot about the musical, like Madison was saying, and this, this um, Ich Ni Sanchi, Ich Ni Sanchi, the counting. And I really liked in Tacitus' film how you could see the counting on the fingers. Um, in the four movements, and um, um, there's three costume changes in the film. All the costumes were sewn by the parents and me and my studio. Um, would anyone like to ask me any questions? <laughs> Well, I mean, the, the film is structurally based on um, warm up, offense, defense, and cool down. And something about, um, I mean, it's an American sport, so that was really like the start of it all, of, like me looking through an American lens at them and working with them. And um, so from the practices, I, you know, determined that kind of arc. and. In the beginning, I was actually interested in just, I thought at first I was going to make a choreographed massage film because it was just so alien and amazing uh, that there was this um, comfort um, and this idea of like quietness in a sport and touching each other. And, um, and But then as I researched the girls more, got to know them, it, it became more complex. And so um, the film is, really a lot about the camera optics and the, the, the spacing. Um, I usually, when I'm working with people, they always know the frame of the film. And so the girls obviously were very aware of everything that was happening within the film and how they interacted with the camera, on and off the camera. Um, so the beginning, the running around the, the you know, 
like Nauman or something. Or, um, <laughs> you know, they don't do that. Um, they're usually running outside. Um, the running towards the camera in the, in the second part that's defining that space. Um, the exercises, some of them were real. Like for instance, like this one was something that was kind of constructed. Um, the basketball tricks, um, you know, they were things they practiced. Um, I especially always loved the one where the ball goes up out of frame. Um, and then the last scene is really inspired by a, a lot of postmodern work um, where they're tracing, there was no direction at all, and they were asked to, uh, I didn't know if you know her. Uh, yeah, they were, no, that was the, yeah, the massage, they, they were, um, they knew who their partners were, but there wasn't a location determined, so they could stop wherever they wanted and start massaging. And, I, and what I was interested in, obviously, was the sound, which I don't think you could hear. It's so subtle, it's just the fabric. Um, but as they switch partners and are massaging, they're slowly moving left out of frame. Um, and then the final section, they were just asked to make as many complex patterns as they could following the lines of the cord. And when they, when the last person stopped, they would hear it because of the fabric and to begin to sing the school song. And yeah, and so that's it. And the music I wanted to say is Michael Webster, an amazing composer uh, from Los Angeles. And it's a really beautiful track. Unfortunately, we didn't really hear it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I actually thought I would make a film on farming um, because I was told that the residency was in rural Japan, but it was really a suburb. And um, I mean, I, I had um, I, I've been very influenced by Jean Rauch, and um, and yeah, and and questions of of ethnography, and so I thought farming would be something that is done everywhere, and there were no, there was no farming, um, and so I was really just looking for a subject. But I didn't really know what I would do, and it sounds. Um, I mean, I was looking and listening for for a subject, and I had a bicycle, and I rode past the school, and I heard the sound the counting, and that's what really drew me in. And then I saw the stage with the curtain, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> stage documentary. It's like, it was just like perfect. And um, yeah, and so I pretty much immediately knew, and I saw the girls practicing. I saw them doing the cool down. I saw them doing the massage. And I immediately started to get, you know, very excited and tried to get access. and. And um, yeah, I did most of my research in Tokyo. They had, um, there's an image form there. I never studied film, or I didn't make a film until, I made one film before this in graduate school, and it was because of Morgan Fisher came to school, and I was like, I want to do that. <laughs> and um, so in image form, I would go in there, and they had an incredible library of experimental film. Um, not the films, but the books, and so that's where I really learned a lot. And um, yeah, and I did a lot of research in Comedy Garçon and Issey Miyake, watching different um, runway shows and, and studying. And, and basically, I had books shipped to me about postmodern dance. There wasn't like no internet or anything. Um, yeah, and it just it just grew bigger and bigger, and and I was really lucky because. The cinematographer was like an unbelievable. I mean, it looks like 
you know, I just put the camera there. We were like 14 people on the crew, and they were the best of the best. And they kept saying, are you sure you don't want to do this in 35? And I was like, no, I only have $5,000. It has to be, you know, and it could only be six reels of film, you know. And so, <laughs> in retrospect, I kind of wish I did it in 35. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty amazing because you could really see, like, there's subtle changes of, like, the light shifting throughout the day. It's up, I was just walked upstairs during the screening and looked at, at the auditions, and it's the same, you know, structurally, you know, something being shot in one day and the subjects being totally aware of what they're doing and how they're being represented. So, yeah. But I, I, when you just said that about the audience, I remember when I made this film, I made the film for the cinema, not for the gallery. And that was kind of, I think, radical at that time because everyone was putting videos in galleries. And I really wanted this doubling of the proscenium and, and that it was a group experience looking at, you know, a team and that it was looking at another culture and that when I first showed the film, I didn't say it was choreographed. It was accepted into like Sundance and MoMA and it was introduced as a documentary. And I just was like, I thought that, I was very interested in that. And, um, and then, I mean, to me, it's so obvious that exactly 30 minutes, it's like, each and then they go, um, and then the ball comes down. And it's like, to me, that like, you know, you know, it's false. But I remember when I first showed it here, it, the audience was so quiet and there's like an uncomfortableness. And then, and then there was an ease and I was very interested in that in the audience and how you feel the audience. So. Mm -hmm. Did the girls ever get a chance to see the film? Oh, yeah. screen with them? And yeah. Have you had any contact with them? Oh, yeah. Since? Yeah. Um, when I finished the film, I went back and we actually screened it in the town. And the whole fucking town came. The guy at the video store, the guy at the sports magazine store, the guy, you know, like everyone, all the parents, all the teachers, like everyone was involved. I kind of have a tendency to do that. And um, it was amazing because the girls kept saying, when we were filming, they kept saying, they thought Steven was going to come and they were going to be doing the moonwalk and and then they were just doing their exercises and they kept saying, Sharon, you're so crazy. And, um, <laughs> and then when they saw the film, it was amazing because the audience, it was like the whole town and hundreds of people and they were like, well not the whole town, but the people I knew. And after they all went, Ah, it was just like I get it, you know. It's very Japanese, and um, and the and the girls. It was like they knew what I was doing. They they knew the frame. They saw the tapes. They saw the practices. Um, but to see it and experience it with an audience, that it was really satisfying. And yeah, and I kept in touch with the girls. But then I think when I was making Pine Flats, so that was in like two thousand four or three, I was working with children again for the first time in a while, and the museum in Tokyo had a reunion for the film and the photos and the girls, and I couldn't go, and so I made a PowerPoint presentation, and the PowerPoint presentation was like, hello girls, this, you know, I still was talking to them like they were children, and, and I introduced them to like the kids of Pine Flat, and then the museum made a video for me of them with their families, their children, 
and they you know gave questionnaires to the girls and asked them their memories and stuff and it was really great so yeah I mean I there's only three of them I really still know where they are but yeah it was a long it was a long time mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it was really fun. I mean, it was 10 days of practice. With, it was five hour days. And um, they, yeah, their suggestions definitely came in. Like the, the hot ball exercise, which I think is very humorous, actually. And they're going, hi, 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 hi. Um, yeah, that was, that was their idea. So. Uh-huh. Um, I just wanted to ask, um, how much of, how much do you think of, like, these rather young kids, um, and their ability to sync up and perform, like, very clean, um, on film? How much do you think is the influence of the choreography that you chose and the choreographer that you chose? And how much do you think has to do with their culture and that it's more from them? I think there's a lot of that slippage, which I think is really interesting to me. For instance, it's very difficult to look at the camera. So in the portrait section, there was direct direction at some point, look at the camera and have eye contact. That was very, very hard. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that in, in and out of the film. Um, um, so you went back to Japan to make yeah, many times, yeah. many times to make other films. Mm -hmm, yeah, and I made a farming film. I made a farming film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, years later. That's right. So I was wondering if, when you were making your farming film, if this film was informing that. I mean, there's a lot of similarities, but obviously there are a lot of differences. Yeah, that one's outside for one because it's yeah. farming, and there's no proscenium, but there's also the very sort of strict yeah. of space and the choreography of bodies and mm -hmm. the creation of lines, etc., etc. So I didn't know if you were... Yeah, to... it's interesting to go back to your question and this question together. I mean, it was definitely about the optics of the camera because all of the action takes place, the, the hay, mm -hmm. the mulching. Um, but I went there um, because of the, an ikibana, a sogetsu, no, a, a radical. She actually left the Sogetsu school of Ikibana and started her own form of Ikibana, no no Ikibana, Ikibana of agriculture. And so she taught these farmers how to make Ikibana from their leftovers and not to have to go to school for like forever and do everything perfectly. Um, and so I went to this area to meet the people that she taught. And I thought, you know, it would be much easier than it was. And, and it was really hard to find people to participate because nobody wanted to stand out in the community. And, um, and a husband and wife, Masa and Yoko Ida, um, they came to me one day and said, oh, we understand completely what you want to do because she was a school teacher and she said, and at lunch, she used to be on the top floor, and she would look down, and she could see the patterns. And, and she was like, we want to do it. And I mean, my work is always about really having it be a collaboration, so I was really lucky. But yeah, the films are, there's a lot of similar, that one's much more about painting. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and those were costumed, too. Mm -hmm. There's a little humor in that one, too. Thank you so much, Benson. Thank you. Sorry about the sound.